Welcome to the Labyrinth Conversation with the Dutchess Community College faculty. I'm Dr. Peter Phipps, your host for this series of conversations, and today I have with me Dr. Abdul Brema from the Mathematics, Physical, and Computer Sciences Department. Welcome, Dr. Brema. Thank you for having me. I would like to start with a question about your teaching experience. I know you've been here at Dutchess Community College for about four years now? Yes. Is this your yes. first teaching position? No. Um, I started teaching uh, in 1988 at the University of Hamburg. During that time I was doing my PhD program. Um, I, was, uh, I was then an instructor and an associate scientist. So I started teaching since 1988. And it sounds like you've also done research. Yes. And is there a connection between these two roles? Well, very important connections uh, uh, because um, some of the research experience that you have uh, can be introduced in the classroom and, uh, and uh, some of the research results can be well introduced in the classroom. So that there is a, there is a clear connection between research and uh, teaching. So, in your classroom, do you have to set a tone? And if you set a tone, is there a particular frame that you look for in your classroom? Well, it's, it's important. I've, uh, from my experience, uh, what I've noticed is that it's important to set the tone the first week mm -hmm. class begins. And that, that makes it clear who is in charge. And, um, and at times um, it helps to control the class and not necessarily get the class out of, uh, out of control. Um, my experience uh, helps me to understand that, that um, a class well controlled is a successful class. If the class is not controlled, students would not take assignments given to them serious, students would not hand in homework on time. So well I try to set the tone first week of classes. And, and what yeah. would be the first step in this process of setting the tone? Uh, well, um, I make sure that I give uh, or I tell students my expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, a well outlined syllabus is given to them that I told them they should use that as a guidance and, um, and the syllabus is so detailed that if they follow that they would uh, know what is expected of them. Abdul, uh, please forgive me but mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that you're a professor of chemistry yes. and so this is a science uh, yes. curriculum that you teach, which yes. of course is rigorous and requires a discipline and, and structure to be yes. successful. Mm -hmm. Is there other things that occur in this first week that, that help to establish the tone you're talking about? Yes, um, well um, it's good you mentioned that I teach chemistry. Um, chemistry has been a course that, ha that, that ha has been a course that has been uh, associated with fear. Um, among students. So uh, students uh, who come to the chemistry class you can feel the anxiety, the severe anxiety. So Sounds reminiscent <laughs> of my own college experience it does, yes. Yes, so um, what is important is that um, as, an, uh, as, as a professor I have to reduce this uh, uh, anxiety uh, in my students and then, and then let them understand that chemistry can also be fun. So um, in that aspect, not only trying to, um, um, how do I put that, not only trying to set a tone, but also try to let the students feel better in mm -hmm. the class. And that helps to create also a positive atmosphere in the class. Okay, so part of having a well-disciplined class is having a positive attitude uh, about being there. Yes. Okay. Now, you do all of this in one week? 
Well, <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, not, not in one week, but um, from time to time, um, I introduce uh, things that uh, help to, 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 to create um, this uh, positive atmosphere. Right. Now, okay. chemistry being fun, could you give me an example of that? Well, that's a good question. Um, chemistry being fun is if you relate uh, chemistry to our everyday experience. Um, we talk about batteries. We use batteries. And then you explain how these batteries are made, show the chemistry behind the batteries. Um, we all take food. Why do we take food? This is also chemistry. and. Um, and it's just interesting. If you look at our household, household um, materials that we use, they are all made of chemistry. So once you relate chemistry to everyday life, it becomes fun. And, and students realize that, oh, I know chemistry. <laughs> they realize that they know chemistry. Yes. So, and, and so it becomes more meaningful because it's meaningful. so that, that's much right. a part of their everyday life. That's right. So they realize that they can uh, associate that to their life style also. Yeah. Now, that suggests a personal relationship that I wouldn't expect from my chemistry uh, instructor. Is mm -hmm. that important in your classroom, your relationship with your students? Well, I consider personal relationship very important. Um, it reduces uh, student anxiety and also um, students sees the professor as approachable and uh, human and caring. So personal relationship can be very helpful. Are there dangers yeah. about a personal relationship? Yes, um, where students, um, there can be dangers um, where students um, may have um, uh, high expectations um, uh, that um, you might not be able to meet, um, also as a human being, you might not be able to meet. And um, we should not forget that at times students have uh, unrealistic goals. And, um, and um, no matter what you try to tell them, um, it seems that uh, it's, it's considered as, uh, as, as not being helpful. And so there are also situations that um, this sort of personal relationship can can be dangerous. So in yeah. addition to being a chemistry instructor, it's important to also be something of a life coach, it sounds like, at least at times. As, um, Maybe that's not a fair question, but uh, to, to help the student um, refocus on the goals that they're there for. Well, um, learning chemistry. Yeah, learn chemistry. Um, what, I, what I normally do, that, that's a very good question. What I normally do is this, uh, with my smaller classes, uh, I teach organic chemistry class, and uh, the maximum number of students you might have for organic chemistry might be 15 students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do is that I introduce student-centered learning. And, uh, and student-centered learning require that you know the goals of each student, you know what each student is wants to achieve and so what you do is to tailor the course to meet these goals so if I have students who have the interest of uh, going into the medical field then I try to tailor my s organic chemistry class to meet these goals by introducing topics that are related to the medical field and uh, obviously, students become more interested. They, they, they become more participating and, and, and uh, attentive and curious. And uh, so I think student-centered student learning is a very good thing. Now, in this student-centered learning, is it important mm. the attitude that you bring towards the students? Um, like, uh, for example, is it important to communicate to them that you believe in them? Very important. That is what gives them the confidence. That is very important. It gives them the confidence. And, and, and there is a way of showing this. And uh, that is, um, for example, giving students um, research work. 
And uh, when the research work is done, they come and present that, and the class ask questions, they answer the questions, and believe me, you will never find a class full of fun than that. Students presenting and having to answer questions from their own peers. Something like a, a, a conference almost. Like a conference almost, that's right. And I, I consider that also as, a, as preparing the students also for um, uh, prepare the students to, to, to learn how to do presentations uh, in conferences. Uh, they gain that confidence. Now, do your students get uh, more formal opportunities for conference work? They do. Um, since we don't do any research, um, although we don't do any research, we still join the um, the American Chemical Society mid Hudson section um, in uh, workshops and symposiums. And then um, we do try to uh, present uh, any research work um, that um, we might uh, have uh, been allowed to present and, um, and, and, and have interactions with other students who are uh, in other uh, colleges and and that gives also the opportunity um, for me to interact with other instructors and professors, and uh, and it has always been a positive thing. And uh, and what I also do is to make sure that um, um, one of my students uh, wins or gets a prize. You rigged the uh, conference. Uh, yes. You're, uh, <laughs> um, that one of my students get a prize. You know, the, that's a conference done annually, and uh, and the prizes are given to undergraduate students that uh, show much interest in chemistry, and they are very good in chemistry. And I uh, make sure that um, one of my students do get prize every every year. I really am curious how this occurs that you can guarantee a winner. <laughs> well. Um, it's 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 what you write about a student, the uh, the student personality, the student attitude um, uh, towards learning, and uh, maturity, and uh, once all these things are in harmony, obviously the student will have to get the prize. So so you you choose wisely, and that yeah. student rises to the top. Uh, to the top. I that's have, right. I have that down. In in terms of structuring um, your learning experiences for your students, do you have a method or a framework for structuring your, each class or each preparation? Or um, well, um, what what I, what I would say is this: that um, I try to advise uh, my students to learn in groups and uh, to be able to uh, identify um, peers that you can learn with and that learning the group is very important. I, I, I lay emphasis on that. And then um, so you see that the class is already structured in the way that students have groups that they learn with and then they, they come up very good and, and, and they know that if problems that they have, there are others that have also similar problems and so they find a common way of approaching those problems. So um, I, I try to create a, um, an atmosphere of uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. That is uh, what I would call that, cooperation. And, yeah. and so this atmosphere of cooperation sort yeah. of reinforces a student-centered approach that it sounds like you believe <laughs> needs to happen in communication in with communication. other learners. Learners, yes. Okay. okay. So yeah, you're not yeah. as student, you're not as, as teacher directed, I guess, as I would think of a scientist uh, as being. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, as, as I would say, um, when I started, I said that with smaller classes, it's, it's always good to, to introduce student-centered learning. However, you have to also be teacher-centered. Um, 
you can uh, totally go on student-centered learning. And in my large classes, um, I'm totally on teacher-centered learning because the class is large. It's difficult to to fulfill goals of each student or of all the students. Yes. However, teacher-centered learning is uh, um, or teacher-centered continuum, I would consider as very important too. So you lecture yeah. at times? Yes. Formal lecture, um, yeah. three hours yeah. at a time? Formal lecture, three hours at a time, and then also um, during lecture hours, I do introduce recitation where we do um, uh, problem solving and all that. Recitation, mm. could you tell me that what that uh, Well, actually the means? recitation is um, periods are uh, introduced in four-year colleges um, where they are purely there for problem solving. Uh, however, in two-year colleges you don't see recitation periods, so I try to introduce that into my class where we do pure problem solving. So a practical application of the, the academic material, material that's in, the right. classroom, in the classroom with you there to, to supervise and to help, mm -hmm. yes, and, and, to, and, and, and that, that has been very helpful and students really enjoy that. And that's in so addition to lab then? Addition to lab, yes. Now in chemistry, it seems like it's just a series of numbers and letters. <laughs> Is there more? to the academic process. Do I have to read to learn chemistry? Yes, you have to You have to read to learn chemistry. And I do tell my students, you have to read. Um, you just don't do chemistry without reading. And uh, the textbook is there to read. And, um, and of course, the students realize that. Um, it's interesting to mention that chemistry is figures and letters. <laughs> that is how students see that. And that is what creates also severe anxiety. In students, um, right, because they're uh, meaningless. Uh, those letters yes, and numbers that, that randomly is what, thrown but, around. <laughs> <laughs> but once students understand um, the language of chemistry, that when you come to the world of chemistry, it's like you're learning a totally different language. And once this language is um, is appreciated, you will find chemistry very interesting. And and uh, once they do that, they find chemistry interesting. And I'll get there in part by reading. Yes. It sounds like in part through faith. <laughs> faith <laughs> that I can, I can succeed. Or belief yes, that I, maybe have, belief you is must, a better you must, you must have the confidence and the belief in you that you can succeed. And, uh, and also to uh, understand that um, um, you have to uh, work hard, mm -hmm. um, be diligent, and um, with, with with uh, and, and also discipline and responsibility with all these uh, attitudes it, it, it all together can be considered as having the right attitude towards learning and uh, and chemistry you need that you must have the right attitude towards learning and that helps you to make it in chemistry and chemistry is, is a subject that you don't start learning and leave your books down for weeks and then go back to that again is something that is continuous and so you have to create the attitude of continuous learning. So I can't yeah. cram right before the quiz. And, and <laughs> yes, because you have to understand what you, you don't have to memorize. Chemistry is typical, it's a course that typically tests your critical thinking and, and um, uh, reasoning. You must have to um, be deductive. Um, Kind of like Sherlock uh, Holmes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> forensic <laughs> science is chemistry, so. <laughs> um, That's a good point. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's right. But uh, the critical thinking and uh, deductive reasoning um, and also problem solving strategies are all important in chemistry. So what I advise my students, um, when the uh, uh, first day of class, I give them um, uh, study tips. And what I advise them is that do not memorize. Make sure you understand the subject that you're learning. Memorization would not help you. So do not memorize. And, uh, and, uh, and those who do not do that, they 
come across very well. It's interesting you should mention that because you started our conversation with mm -hmm. the anxiety that many yes. students bring to your class. It, and, and of course, managing my anxiety, I want to control everything. Yes. And of course, the more I try to control it, the more anxious I tend to get. But that memorization is such a great strategy. You, you know. Learning is scary. It is difficult. That, that, that's right. That's How right. do you make it okay, other than just yeah. telling them so? <laughs> well, um, I, w w because I know learning is scary, what I do is to um, give research works that are common and interesting. And um, and then w and I know everybody will be able to get a result from this research work. And then uh, there is a, uh, a, a discussion about the research work, and everybody participates. Mm -hmm. Feel free to participate. And with that participation, you realize that students gain confidence. That scary goes away. The atmosphere becomes positive, and all that. And there is one thing to that I tell my students that they should feel free to ask questions because in my class there is no stupid question. Uh, that means no question is considered stupid. No question is considered stupid. Every question is important. And, uh, and these questions, not only that, um, is just a question, but it helps also the professor to know where substantial material is missing, and and therefore it helps the professor to improve the uh, the teaching. So um, questions are important, and no question is considered as a stupid question. So feel free to ask questions, and that takes also away the scary and 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 encourages participation. But won't I come across as looking dumb, both to yeah. you and to the students? Even yeah. if you tell me it's not dumb, I'll still yeah. look dumb. No, <laughs> no. It depends on uh, how the how. Uh, if a student asks a question, it depends on how the professor responds to that question. And uh, and if the if the professor responds or the instructor responds to the question uh, in in the manner that shows respect to the student and, and, and respect to all the students, I don't think any student will feel um, dumb or looking dumb. So you work yeah. hard to make it safe to make, to make a mistake in your classroom? Well, at times uh, it's also a good strategy to introduce in your class by writing something wrong and let the students uh, see that and tell you. Oh, this is this is this not that this that is how it should be. So sometimes and you then, model that. Uh, making that's a right, and 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 it helps uh, to know also that the students really have understood um, the subject. That yes. brings me to a question that um, um, just suddenly popped up in my head: Do you have them write themselves for you? write questions themselves for not, me. Not questions um, for you, but just writing, a uh, writing process at all. Well, um, um, chemistry at, uh, as a typical science and as a typical experimental science, um, where students do writing and submit them to you uh, is during their uh, lab work. So uh, students do present lab reports where you uh, clearly give them the format of uh, how the report will look like. And this, of course, helps students also to, to really learn how to write and learn how to uh, present uh, experimental data. Um, so um, when you look at it, I told them, for example, my format of uh, report writing should look like this. You should give an introduction, and uh, this introduction should uh, um, consist of um, um, the purpose of uh, the experiment and, 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 and the principles underlying the experiment. And of course then uh, you should also show the procedure, how you did the experiment. And then um, the data that you collected, you should also give that. So you have the introduction, you have procedure, then you have data, and then you go over to um, 
results. The results are to interpret the data that you have collected. And, um, and like the sciences, that may involve uh, calculations, graphs, and all other things. And then uh, after the results, you would then discuss your results. So discussion becomes the interpretation of your results. And I think this way of writing helps students really to understand. It is a very really nicely structured <laughs> format, isn't format, it? Yes. For yeah. writing and, and to yeah. demonstrate the, the, the clarity of your own thinking. That's right. I, I, I think that's an elegant strategy for writing. <laughs> I'm wondering, you. that takes discipline. What yeah, are your thoughts about yeah. discipline in the classroom? Well, um, uh, discipline, uh, discipline is very important um, without discipline uh, because I have that experience. Without discipline, uh, as I have earlier said, students may take the class for granted and um, if you don't take care, the class gets out of control and at the end of it, you end up having um, an unsuccessful class, an unsuccessful class. Uh, why do I say so? I, when I started teaching earlier in 1988, I was doing my PhD work and, um, and so I still felt like a student uh, myself. So I spoke the language of the students and um, I did like them and I thought that was going to create a wonderful uh, atmosphere. It did at the beginning, but then I realized that towards the end, the class was in chaos. <laughs> um, total out of control, a lot of homeworks not submitted, assignments not submitted, lab reports not submitted, and all that, and I realized that cannot continue like This that. has been a wonderful yeah. conversation, Abdul, uh, thank and you. it can't continue sometimes, <laughs> and this is an, one, another one of those times. This yeah. has been a conversation with Dr. Abdul Brima from the Department of Mathematics, Physical Sciences, and Computer Sciences. And he's given us a wonderful recitation on the way to teach chemistry as fun and pragmatic and an important part of our everyday lives. And we want to thank you for coming today. It's been an mm -hmm. honor to have you sit with me and to discuss these um, ideas about teaching and learning. And I've certainly learned that maybe Chemistry doesn't have to be a scary thing after all. That's Thanks. right. Thanks very much. Ed, thank you for having me too. It's been a pleasure. Learn to master the skills you need at Dutchess Community College. I want to become a master of images and travel the world as a cameraman. I want to become a master of sound and music. DCC has everything you need to become the master of your own career as an industry professional. I'm going to make music videos. Dutchess Community College has helped thousands of students take the first real steps towards furthering their education and starting an exciting and successful career in media production. I'm going to write the next big thing in movies.